Senator Cotton. Welcome, you, to, welcome to the committee Thank as you. our newest member. And Good to be here. I'm saddened to hear the senator from Rhode Island and the senator of Georgia agree that it's become very partisan. Um, I suppose I was added to make it more bipartisan. Um, and I want to start with a bipartisan conversation that I think will matter to both sides of our aisle um, because it's just about the way the CBO uh, interacts with members of this committee and members of Congress as a whole, um, the way they respond to requests for information from us. Um, I want to use an example, the um, analysis CBO did last fall about Medicaid uh, uh, coverage losses under one version of our health care bill. I'm not sure which one it was. Uh, some of your analysts came to the Republican conference meeting to explain, I think it was a five million person loss under Medicaid. And that analysis turns out to have assumed that some number of the 18 non-expansion states would expand Medicaid despite their previous decisions not to since 20, uh, the 2010 law. And then if our, law, if our bill had passed, those states would then decide to drop Medicaid. Um, when asked which states would be doing that, and especially if Texas and Florida would be doing it, the two largest non-expansion states, since if you didn't have one of those to expand, they couldn't even get to five million in total population. The analysts told us they couldn't answer that. They don't make that kind of prediction. Um, they were just going on past programs and so forth. Um, I found that pretty astonishing. I mean, at, at root, that's more of a political judgment than it is an economic assessment. And there's just no good explanation for why they reached that conclusion. And I found that to be fairly consistent with my study of CBO reports, which are usually pretty good when it comes to government revenues and outlays, but leave something to be desired when it comes to things like political judgments or market forces and incentives or the incentives of private individuals. And I believe that those assumptions are rarely made adequately public uh, or explained. And it makes it harder for us to do our job and certainly harder for the public to understand the kind of projections you're making. Um, let me stop there and see if you'd like to respond to, to that. Well, sure, sure. Um, we're not particularly happy about having to make that sort of assumption, but it was actually absolutely key to understanding the proposal uh, that, that how, many, um, how many states will choose to expand or not expand. If we, if we choose no more would expand, that's an assumption. That would affect our numbers. If we, if we chose that more, some would expand. Uh, we're, we're trying to do that. Um, we, we tried our best to look at past history, and what we did is we, we put states in, into buckets. We had different buckets, you know, more likely to expand, less likely in the middle. And we actually really did put the states in there, but our thinking was we didn't want to talk about particular states, because if you're wrong about a state in the wrong bucket here, it should be over here, there might be some state that, here that should be over there. So the errors can somewhat cancel well, it, out. If I could, Mr. Hall, though, I don't want mm -hmm. to get into the details of that particular analysis. My, my point right. is, though, that that was a very small universe of data, 19, uh, I'm sorry, 18 data right. points. It's not millions of data points as you're often used. Right. Um, the kind of analysis and, and assumptions you just made was, was not explicit in the reports we received. It took four of your analysts coming to explain that to us in detail for senators to understand it and certainly for the American people to understand it. Why not just make that kind of thing public? You know, do something like, you know, you know different scenario analysis, uh, making your explicit assumptions more explicit, both for us and for the public. You know, we're, we're happy to start trying to do more of that. Uh, you know, my only, my only defense at this point is we, we only have so many people, so much time, and that these are trade-offs. But, but if Congress, if, if you all want more time spent on that sort of transparency, we, we'll do it. How many people do you have? Well, on health care, let me just do health care first. Health care, complete health care, we have 40 people. So the people who are really engaged was probably, were probably less than 20 people in all these estimates. So, so it, it, you know, we have 230 people total. We have about 40 on health care. We, you know, we have lots of other buckets we have to cover. So we're, we're, we're not huge. But, um, but we do have some people, and I tell you, they, they were working full out on things. Let, let me conclude with a story. Uh, in the summer of 2013, I was a new congressman, um, and there was an immigration debate going on at the time. The CBO had produced an immigration estimate, um, and it was controversial, I think, on all quarters for the estimates it made about future immigrant flows, um, 
legal versus illegal, impact on population, impact on wages, and so forth. Um, I wanted to get a little more information about that. I spoke with your predecessor um, after some time. Uh, he offered to come by. I, I said, I'd, I don't want to just get the wave tops here. I want to get down into the details. Um, he said that they just don't have the resources to do that. I said, I'll come to you. You don't have to come to my office. I said that it wasn't a finished product. I said, look, two years ago, I was modeling um, you know, complex economic and business problems at a private consulting firm. I understand how to work a spreadsheet. Um, I'll sit with your analyst at her desk and go through everything. And that was refused to me. <coughs> Is that an appropriate response to a member um, of Congress? No, no. We, we would like to do a lot better. So, so if, if I have a similar question about a future analysis, then I would be welcome to come and sit at someone's desk and walk through assumptions and modeling? Absolutely. I, I never refuse to go and talk with a member and, and bring staff and talk about something. Thank you. Thank you. 